The world of electric vehicles can sometimes seem like it comes with its own vocabulary, and that's where we come in. Look out for our ABC of EV series to demystify the words and phrases you'll hear. And if you haven't checked out our previous videos on direct current and alternating current, we'll put a link to those in the show notes below. Today, it's the turn of K. Welcome to the ABC of EVs. K is for kilowatts and kilowatt hours. And if you like this video, remember to hit subscribe and never miss a show. Today we'll talk about watts, kilowatts, and kilowatt hours, and how that all relates to batteries, charging, and the motor which turns the wheels. A watt of electricity is a unit. It's used to describe and measure the power requirement of something like a light bulb or an appliance. A kilowatt is 1000 watts, and every electrical appliance will have a wattage rating to describe how much electricity is needed to work. Think of kilowatts being a similar way of describing how much water is flowing through a hose pipe at any point in time. Kilowatts and kilowatt hours are two of the most commonly used terms around EVs, but they're not interchangeable. They're very different things. A kilowatt is a measure of energy. A kilowatt hour is a measure of energy over time. As you may have guessed by now, one kilowatt of electricity used by a heater, for example, for one hour consumes one kilowatt hour. And kilowatt hours is how you pay for electricity at home. Kilowatt hours are equivalent to how much water comes out the end of that hose pipe and into a bucket over a period of time. This is where we'll talk about charge speeds. A kilowatt is a measure of power. So a 50 kilowatt charger is a more powerful charger than a 10 kilowatt charger. And the more power that it would put into your EV's battery, over the same period of time. Now, if bigger is better, why don't we just have more powerful chargers everywhere? Well, there are things to consider, like how much grid power is available at a charging site. And even if every charger was very powerful, many EVs have batteries which can't accept large amounts of power. The size of an EV battery is measured in kilowatt hours. That's describing the total energy capacity. Now, if your battery is measured at 50 kilowatt hours and you drive at a speed which, for instance, used one kilowatt of power in the motor, you could, in theory, drive for 50 hours, right? Well, of course, that hypothetical example is not realistic. The motor uh, would maybe use six kilowatts. The heater and air conditioning maybe three. Other systems maybe one kilowatt. That's a total of 10. So 50 kilowatt hours divided by 10, well then you could drive for five hours. Taking that example above, you used 50 kilowatt hours of energy by using 10 kilowatts of power for five hours. Well, there is another calculation you'll see in the world of EVs and that is related to economy. It's related to how far you could travel in that time. So when you're looking at maybe buying an EV, you might see miles or kilometers expressed against kilowatt hours. Okay, let me give you an example to try and explain it. The 2019 Nissan Leaf has an economy figure of 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. It will travel 4.2 miles by using a kilowatt hour of energy. Now, this is written either as WH, watt hours per mile, WH per km, so watt hours per kilometer, or even kilometers per kilowatt hour. It can get quite confusing quite quickly. Obviously, the higher that value, the higher the miles per kilowatt hour, the more you can travel per energy, the better. It shows the car is more efficient at converting kilowatt hours of stored energy into distance traveled. Now, in the US, the Environmental Protection Agency uses the number of kilowatts per hour needed to run a vehicle for 100 miles. In that case, they shorten it to 
kWh per 100 miles. And from that calculation, the EPA expresses EV's energy consumption as a way of comparing different vehicles. Now, for starters, there is a total power output or power output per motor, which for electric cars is quoted in kW or kilowatts. And to make things even more confusing, these kilowatts have nothing really to do with the kilowatts that come from a charger, for instance. A kilowatt in an EV motor is equivalent to around 1.34 horsepower in regular language if you're used to combustion cars. So a 150 kilowatt motor is about 200 horsepower or PS. A Nissan Leaf, you might see, is written as 100 kilowatts of power. That signifies how powerful the motors inside it are. A Porsche Taycan would have 560 kilowatts of power. Well, we hope that helped you understand more about the basics and the language around EVs. Leave us a comment below and let us know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and we'll make more like this. And we'll see you on the next one.